Hello, my name is Colin and welcome to the first RapidXR live stream. Today we're going to be using the RapidXR Studio to import and customize a 3D model. The RapidXR Studio is a professional version of our 3D toolkit. It's a fantastic product to bring your content into a 3D environment and give it to your clients. It offers extensive and highly secure collaboration features, materials, objects, and characters used for architecture and roleplay training. It also has specialized wizards that majorly reduce the time and cost recreated um, cost of creating 3D scenes. Today, I'm going to show you how fast we're able to take an existing 3D model, make it inter interactive, and then give it to your clients. I have an example pulled up already of a model that we imported into the RapidXR Studio and turned into an interactive and uh, totally self-paced tour. So I'll play this scene and wander around this house so we can take a look at it from all different angles and see how we are able to uh, touch it up and brush it up. All right, so this is the exterior of the scene and I'm going to enter the house now, which actually just transitioned to a new scene which is optimized for the Oculus Quest. So the, in this specific example, the client wanted to use an Oculus Quest as their main device, and we were able to tailor the experience to work perfectly with that. However, with all of our uh, experiences that you can work with with your client, you can tailor each experience to whichever devices you would like, or to all of them. All right, so this is that imported 3D model of the house that you are fully able to tour and see from all angles. Now let's actually take a look at how you can create this from scratch and how you can bring your own 3D model into the studio, brush it up, and then give it to your clients. Okay, so I'm gonna start a new scene so I can have this new experience uh, panel and just have a nice blank template. One thing you'll see in this new experience window is something that I mentioned earlier. Here are the wizards that allow for that uh, for the rapid creation of 3D scenes using imported models. The one that you'll want to use to import your models is the architecture wizard. I'm going to click on that now to get started. All right, so the first step in the architectural wizard is to actually choose which 3D model you would like to import into the RapidXR Studio. Fortunately, I've already downloaded a file onto my computer, so I'm just going to load it up and it will take just a minute to be imported into the studio. Now, the wizard does more than just importing the actual 3D model. The further steps in the wizard, as we'll see in just a second, allow you to actually apply some rather complex settings, like enabling multiplayer scenarios, and even giving your clients various interactive tools for them to use. Also, you're able to replace textures or materials on it to make it look outstanding. All right. So it looks like my import my model was Im, uh, imported successfully, but I need to change around a few of these initial settings to make it work really well. First, I'm gonna to switch to inches so I can use the same unit that the, um, the uh, model was designed with. And then I can use this replace materials button down at the bottom to start replacing the materials on my shed. Now, the reason why I wanna do this is to really make this uh, shed that I'm importing look fantastic. So those materials that I'm about to apply um, contain things that uh, the imported model would not be able to do. For example, the materials that I'm going to choose right now can show reflections on them and other great high, um, you know, highly detailed graphics and photorealistic settings that you can really make uh, use to make your uh, models look very, very realistic. All right. So what I'd like to try and do is change around some of these walls, which are just kind of a dark gray, to actually have a material on them, um, probably like a wood paneling material, like you would see on the side of a shed. Then also it looks like my, my roof could use a little touch up, maybe have some uh, a different looking uh, shingles. I could experiment with some different looking shingles. All right, let's try that. So these sections right here show the wall um, parts of the model. So I just need to click on them and this will isolate which part of the wall I'm looking at. So I can then apply a specific material. I'm gonna to go to the external material, but really quick, I just wanna show the vast material library that comes with the RapidXR Studio. So there are dozens of these very, very um, 
highly detailed materials that you can apply on any of your imported models uh, whenever you, uh, in the actual import process. So you can apply any of these glass or metallic or wooden or external or whatever you really need for your model materials and make it really make it pop. So I'm going to go to external and use a nice wood siding material that I can see right here. I may also want to just change the color a little bit so it's not quite as dark. Maybe a nice light gray, light gray blue. All right, that looks good. Now I want to apply that same material and color to each of the other walls on my shed. So I'm going to click on each of those walls and just apply the same wood siding material and the same color. This is super simple. All I'm doing is just clicking on which wall I want to apply it to and then just changing the color. Now I also said that I wanted to change some of the roof. So I'm going to go to everything and now I'm going to actually search for a material rather than looking in my list for shingles. There we go. I have quite a few to choose from. I would like to see what the basic gray shingles look like. That looks better. And you can even preview different ones. I like the gray shingles the most, so I'm going to stick with that. And since I finished applying to my walls, materials to my walls, I'm going to move on. I'm going to press OK. Or actually, really quick, I'd like to see what the whole thing looks like before I continue on with my uh, with the architectural wizard. So I'm going to reset my view and now I can actually look like or now I can actually see what the shed will look like with those materials applied. Looks much better. All right, I'm going to hit OK so I can continue with my architectural wizard. All right, I'm going to go to the next step, which is regarding the skies and environment around the, the um, imported model. I would like to have some kind of backyard setting so I can see this shed, exterior shed, actually in a, you know, its natural environment in the, the backyard of a house. And to do so, I'm going to choose some clouds so I have a little bit more kind of a photorealistic scene. You know, there's usually clouds in the sky. I'm going to also apply a background so I'm going to have some hills in the distance. And I also want to change the grid so I don't have this um, gray grid anymore. Instead, I want a nice outdoor and uh, dirt, or, yeah, dirt patch beneath my, um, beneath my shed here. All right, one thing that I could change if I wanted to is the lighting settings to possibly make this lighter or darker, or even the daytime settings to set it at night or in the middle of the day. Right now, I'll just leave these around where they are, but I will try and experiment with them later in the actual studio. All right. I'm going to move on to the next step. And while this does look like a simple step, just one checkbox, this is probably enabling one of the most complex features that the wizard has to offer. By just checking this one box, I just enabled a multiplayer setup for my clients. So now I can actually enter this experience with my clients completely remotely. So I could have a client you know, all the way across the country join in the same experience with me, even in virtual reality if they wanted, and we could look at that together. And this step actually has one extra benefit for that um, specific case, which is to actually give those clients, even if they are, you know, a thousand miles away, an interactive tool so you both can identify what you're looking at. The tool that I have in mind is a basic laser pointer. All right, so I have just finished my wizard here and I have a basic setup for my imported 3D model, which is my exterior shed, and my characters or my clients, really, who are gonna be able to join this scene. All right, what I wanna do now is just move my shed backwards a little bit, and my next steps are to try and recreate that backyard feel. So to do this, I have um, some models from the um, RapidXR model pool, and these will be available to anybody that I'm going to draw on. The first is just a very basic fence to kind of surround my yard and define how large it should be. I'll move the shed into a little corner here so you can see what it would look like. All right, now I wanna add in just a very basic lawn. So I'm gonna drag in a cube, lower it down a little bit, and now 
scale it using those white handles until it's pretty big because I would like to add a material on this of grass. So I know that grass will be under terrain, so I could search for it, but I also know that it's just in my terrain area. So I'll click on terrain, and I have a few grass options to choose from. I like that grass rocky one the most, but it looks like it's a little blurry right now. So to fix that, I'm gonna increase the zoom slider so it looks much more detailed. All right, that looks pretty good. However, this is a very empty backyard at the moment. As you can see, there's really nothing in it except for that shed in the fence. So I'd like to kind of supplement this backyard a little bit with just a few natural objects. One of the great things that the studio comes with is a whole library of natural objects in this objects section. I can start adding in trees to my backyard as well as boulders and rocks. These should give it a little bit more of a natural, realistic feeling. It does help sometimes to change some of the colors on some of your objects, just so you don't have that same exact looking rock all over the place. All right, I'll add just a couple more trees around the outside of my yard. And let's try and vary it up a little bit. Put, oh, it looks like I had a couple pine trees in there already. I'll put a spruce and maybe in the yard as well. And a couple of birch trees. Perfect. All right. Now that I have some objects in my natural looking objects in my scene, I would also like to add just a few things to make this look a little bit more realistic. So for example, I'm gonna go back to my shared model pool and add in a house. And that house will just sit right on the edge of the property. So it looks like it's sitting on the road. However, my house uh, just covered up my players, so instead of leaving it there, I'm gonna move my players into my backyard or clients. And now seal them in with that house. The reason why you usually wanna do that is you just wanna make sure that your clients don't wander off in the middle of your demo. One thing that you, is never great for any demo is a client getting lost so just having a nice contained area for them to wander around in and then explore their imported model is perfect. A wide, huge open area is not recommended because like I said, they could get lost. So I'll just try and seal them in a little bit using that fence and house and a couple of rocks. Okay, now that I have my imported model and my whole backyard built, now I would like to start adding in some actual um, interactive elements to this scene. Um, the first thing that I'll try and add is actually having uh, the option for my client to actually enter this shed. So right now, if I try to enter it, the doors are shut and obviously I wouldn't be able to get through. So my first step will actually be to have my doors open for my clients so they can see inside the shed and even step inside it if they would like. The way that I'm gonna do that is just have an animation on each of the doors here. And uh, the animations will have to be a little special because since it's a door, it will need to have a hinge rotation or rotating around a um, specific point rather than just a normal rotation which rotates around the center of an object. So what I'd like to do is use a new, uh, or a pretty new feature, um, which is called the hinge point object. And if you place that basically where a hinge is located, then you can prepare to actually hook it up to another object, in this case, my door, to make that hinge point. First, I'm gonna switch to my hierarchy so I can take a look at uh, finding my door here in my listed hierarchy. But it looks like my hierarchy is a little messy since I've added some objects from my backyard. So I'm gonna clean this up very quick. I'll call my cube here my lawn. I'll group all my objects together 
here and call these trees and rocks. And that looks much better. Now I have all of my rocks and trees all contained, so my hierarchy looks much cleaner. So now I don't have to look through the whole thing. I can just try and find the point, uh, oh, one more, the group, excuse me, in the, the model that I actually want to animate, which is the door here. Okay, so it looks like the door on the right is this section here, which means the door on the left is this one here. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate my hinge object so I can actually have a hinge for both my doors. On the first hinge object, I think it was, oh, it was the second one. So I'm gonna select my hinge object, select add object and select that second entry here. And on the other hinge object, it's the first. Now, when I have those doors selected, they will rotate on the hinge. And I can create an animation of that rotation or of the door opening by simply clicking on the animation tab and then dragging those arrows one more time and I know that it's an animation because I see this yellow preview here. All right, so I have the animation created, but I do want a couple of settings on the animation, which is to have it play at a specific time and to slow down a little bit. I don't want the doors to just you know, fling open. I would like them to slowly open for my players at about four seconds, four to five seconds in. So I'm gonna have this animation play at four seconds and I want it to take about two seconds, so slow it down and I'd like it to ease in or accelerate into the animation. All right, I'm gonna create the exact same setting on my right door here. So create the animation, have it start at about four seconds, slow it down so it takes two seconds to swing open rather than one, and then have it accelerate into its animation. All right, so I think this scene or uh, yeah, I think this is ready to be demoed. Um, and the way you can do that is by clicking on the play button here. So I'm gonna click play and then play viewer just like I did with the other house. And when I do, I will enter my backyard. Hopefully the door should, there we go, open any second. All right, that looks great. There's one issue, which is I don't have a floor here, but fortunately that's an easy fix. So now let's actually take a look at how you can start adding objects into your 3D model. So as we just saw, I'm missing a floor inside of my shed. So I'm just gonna zoom inside my shed really quick and add a floor. Fortunately, the RapidXR Studio has um, a ton of pre-existing objects, 3D objects that you can choose from. I've just drag dragged in a basic plane to act as my floor. Now I'm gonna add a material, and I want a similar material to the wood that's already down there. So I'm gonna select my wood category, and let's take a look. Looks like there are some wood panels, and if I change the color, then I can try and match the wood that's already there. That looks pretty close. So I'm gonna rotate these wood panels, and then scale the object so it fills my shed here, just like that. Okay, now that I actually have a floor in there, I have something that I can put objects on. So what I'd like to try is now putting some objects inside my shed so I can kind of get a sense of what it feels like when it's full. However, it is pretty dark in here. So first things first, I'd like to add a little uh, light bulb that I can just turn on um, using a light switch. In other words, I'm going to be adding the first true interactivity into my scene that my clients can actually go up, you know, hit that light switch and then see a light bulb turn on. So let's see how you can make that. I'm just going to start off with one very simple object, which is a sphere, and this will basically be my light bulb. So I'll shrink it down and I will also apply a glass material. And it looks like I was searching through wood apply glass. It looks like it's pretty transparent right now, so I'm gonna choose a slight blue color, but also increase its transparency so you can't really see through it. Okay, now that I have 
my light off, and that will be basically one state of my light bulb, I need to make the second state, which is light on. So I'll have one light bulb that's off and another light bulb that is turned on, which I can simulate with a nice use of the glow setting there. All right. I also need something to actually emit light inside of my shed though. As you can see, that light on, it, it has a nice uh, kind of halo around it, but it doesn't actually emit light to fill up my room here. So what I wanna add is a point light. Unlike a spotlight, the point light um, emit, emits lights in all directions rather than just one direction. So it can fill up a nice space like a room really well. However, as you can see, it's pretty bright in its default settings. So I'm gonna uh, decrease its intensity a little bit and also change the color of the light because right now it's just a bright white light. And instead I'd like a softer yellow light like my light bulb. So I will choose a nice yellowish color, not too yellow. There we go, that looks good. And possibly increase the intensity just a tad. Okay, now that I have my three light bulbs, I'm going to create my light, bulb, or light switch. This is super simple. All you need is just a couple objects. All you need is really just one object. I'm gonna use two to try and make it look a little bit better. This will be the faceplate, and I'll just do a kind of a gray cube for that. And then for the actual switch, I'll just duplicate my faceplate, shrink it down, and group those two objects together to create a light switch. All right, now I can actually start putting it all together to create a light that I can actually turn on in my shed here. Now this part isn't totally necessary, but just so I don't have light bulbs hanging, just floating in midair, I'm gonna add a little cylinder and move it to the top of my shed to simulate a little wire hanging down from the ceiling. Just like that. Oh, I uh, could go up a little bit higher, it looks like. All right, now that I have my wire hanging, I can attach my light bulbs to the bottom of it. And I will use snap points to do this. So I just hit the space bar to enable snap points. Now I'm just dragging those snap points so they all fit together. Okay, oops, just move the wall instead of my light. There we go. All right, so you may see though that I've uh, kind of put them all together, um, but haven't really glued them all together. And that's because I just need to program my light switch with a very simple program that has my turned off light bulb disappear or deactivate when it is clicked and have my actual uh, turned on light bulb, activate or turn on. And same goes with my actual, oops. There we go, point light to turn on as well when that light switch is touched. However, what that means is that I also need to deactivate my light bulb, turned on light bulb, and my light at the start of the scene. All right, now I should have a light bulb that works. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna test it again by playing the viewer. So I'll hit play and viewer again to see if I can get this light bulb to work. All right, so after about four seconds, there's my animation. And this looks so good so far, my light is turned off. And here we go. Yes, perfect. So my light switch perfectly works in my shed to illuminate it. And it'll just stay on for the rest of the time that I'm in the experience. Okay, so I would also like to see what that light would illuminate 
um, you know, with things actually being in the shed. So let's take a look at how you can actually add objects to your 3D models and, um, you know, see how they, uh, how will they blend. So I'm going to go back to our shared model pool and just start dragging in a few of these uh, construction, construction slash tool shed objects into my shed here. I'll begin with a basic little tool bench, which it do doesn't really look like it will fit on that side. So I will rotate it, uh, let's see, about 90 degrees. So it will fit on the far wall. Perfect. And I'll also add, I have a few cabinets I could add in here but I don't want to make it too cluttered. So I think I'll stick with one at the moment. But if I really wanted to see what two looked like, all I'd need to do is just drag in the other, do a quick rotation to see what that would look like. And as I feared, or as I thought, it looks a little crowded in here. So I'll delete that one to give myself a little bit more space. All right. I'm also gonna add a little laptop onto my workbench that I can actually use as a promotional product. So since I'm gonna be giving this to, my, to a client of mine, I might wanna show some of the other work that I've done as a um, developer and creator for R Rapid XR. And to do that, I can add in a video that shows some of the previous creations I've made as a slight little promotion or advertisement, or you could work with your clients to show, have them show uh, a promotional video of their own. I've already uploaded a little video, and this is of the house that I had in earlier, but I needed to fit it exactly to the laptop screen here. But fortunately, we have some great features for that. The first thing is to get my video panel to be the exact same size as my laptop screen. So I'm gonna click on the scale button and copy the scale of my laptop screen and paste that same scale onto my video. Now this, the screen on my laptop and my video are the exact same size, but I also need the ro their rotations to be the same. So I'm gonna click on rotation now, copy the rotation on the screen and paste that same rotation on the video. Now when I snap them together, the video will hover exactly over my laptop screen. I would like this video to loop just to make sure that it doesn't end before I, I can actually see it. Okay. Let's take a look one more time. And now I should have everything within my shed that I want, including that promotional video on my laptop. And it looks like it's working perfectly. All right, I'm gonna turn on my light. And this really gives me a good sense of how large that shed is and all the things that I could actually fit in there. All right, that looks just great. Now, one thing that um, a client may want is to see their scene at certain times of day. Fortunately, with the uh, RapidXR Studio, that is very, very simple to do. All you need to do to see your scene at different times of day is just move the daytime slider. So on your right scene panel, you have your daytime slider and you can see what that would look like at night, in the morning, at noon, or whatever time of day you would like. I wanna see what this scene looks like at night so I can really see that light kind of illuminate my room. So I'm gonna play the viewer again so I can see this scene at night. Really quickly though, I do wanna bring attention to this dialogue, which is telling me that I can actually record a video whenever I want. Now that's very important and I'll come back to that in a minute, but I just wanted to let you know that I could record any of this and use it for media and um, promotional content. All right, so I have my laptop turned on as it should be. However, it is pretty dark in there since there's not much light in my scene. So now I can go in, turn on that light and really see how well that works illuminating my imported 3D model. Okay, so now that I actually have my whole scene set up, customized, I have my imported model in there, now I wanna go to the next step, which is actually sharing this content with my client. Really, I want to give them all the options they have to experience this in the best way possible. 
And um, to do that, the first step will be actually saving this so that I have a file that I can actually send to the client. Um, my first step will be, well, I'm just gonna change my day time again. Uh, yeah, just like that. I don't wanna ha actually have it set at night, um, but I did just wanna see what it looked like at night. All right, now that I have my correct day time um, selected, I actually wanna save this experience. So I'll go up to my save button over here. And with the new save window that appeared, I can give it a title and more information. And I can even choose a preview image that the client will see when they open this up. As you can see though, my preview image was taken when it was pretty dark out. And so I actually wanna choose a new preview image using the manual snapshot tool in the studio. So using this, you can choose your own snapshot previews to give your clients the best looking uh, thumbnail for your projects. All right, I've captured a thumbnail that I think looks a, li a lot better. Now I'm gonna save again. I will call this backyard shed uh, experience. And this is the base version. Normally you could put in some more version notes about you know what you changed or what you added. Um, right now I will leave that part and the description blank. However, remember that adding um, content to those will make this a lot more discoverable, especially for public experiences. So if you're looking for uh, an experience to get as much attention as possible, you'll really wanna add in an in-depth description um, so your, your users can uh, see what it's about, but also so it's easier to search in, uh, for search engines. Okay, now I can actually save this experience. And like I said, I'll add in my own description and version notes later. And this save process just takes a few seconds to actually upload this experience to my account. And it looks like it worked. I have my save successful window here, right here. And now I actually can talk a little bit about how I can share this and why it's so important um, to share this with your clients. So my first option to actually give this to my client is to upload it or share it with my client's workspace. And as you can see, I have a workspace right here that I can um, give it to my client uh, basically immediately. You know, the second I choose a sharing option, they will immediately have access to what I just made. I'm gonna choose a view only because I want my client to be able to view this on whichever device they have. And um, now, whatever they, um, whatever device they would like to view it on, they can. If they have their own uh, desktop or PC, they could view it on that. However, they can also view it on all major VR headsets, mobile headsets, mobile devices, including phones, smartphones, and PCs and Macs. So your client has a lot of options to view this experience that you just created for them. One more thing about that window, and I can bring it up using my little sharing options as well, is that uh, if my client had a standalone app, we would uh, have just updated this experience for them immediately. Um, the clients can use the generic RapidXR apps, or we can actually create and brand an app specifically just for their businesses. Um, ultimately, we can actually help you make those apps for specific clients, um, which would actually include one or more of those experiences like the one I've just made. So you can have as many experiences as you want in your app or just one. And finally, on the last thing that I'd like to call attention to on this dialogue is our customize the experience link right here. If I click on that, that would actually open up the experience dial um, web page in which I could change a lot of its settings, including um, applying a um, custom thumbnail if I wanted, uh, adding a video, or giving a really long uh, description that contains a lot of uh, embedded links, um, possibly YouTube videos, or more. So you have a lot of customization options for your experience description, basically what your client would see when you save your experience, and you can access that on um, your sharing options or save successful window through that link. Um, the onboarding for clients is extremely simple, and we'll explain that in more detail in later streams. Um, or if you'd like a demo, please just contact us. 
And because we want to get the most out of um, the content you just produced, we're going to show you two additional methods that are very accessible uh, and great to share with your clients. All right, the first of these is actually capturing video of your experience and then sending it to them or sharing it with them um, through a different number of different ways. So the way you can capture video in the builder, or excuse me, in the studio, is what I mentioned earlier. When you play your viewer, you have a little dialogue that tells you if you press the R key when you're recording, or when you're playing, then it will start recording. So I'm gonna press OK. And now I will actually record a video by pressing R. So the re video recording has just started. And everything I see now, or everything I look at, will be part of the video. So I wanna just explore my shed a little bit, maybe use a laser pointer, turn on the light, and then um, explore the exterior of the shed. Just make sure it looks good before I hit R again to stop um, my video. All right. One of the great things with that tool is you can actually upload series of videos. So if you'd like, you can take you know, four or five videos during a, a session and um, all of those videos will be saved on your computer, but then you will have the option of uploading them to your account. Right now, I'm not gonna upload it to my account because I would like to send that video manually to my client via email or social media, but know that you have many options to capture that video and then send it on um, via uh, manually or send it on um, through your RapidXR account. All right, um, the other way that you can really share this experience with your client is by capturing a 360 video or excuse me, 360 image. One of the other uh, wizards that the RapidXR Studio comes with is the Mobile HQ Preview Wizard. Rather than demoing that today, I'm just gonna talk about that just a little bit so you can get an idea of how you can create those 360 images and then give them to your clients. Basically, whenever you start this Mobile HQ um, Preview Wizard, you'll be able to choose your experience that you wanna capture a 360 image of and then um, you'll have, have the option to send that 360 image onto your client. That's really, really nice um, because if your client is using a weaker VR device like an Oculus Go or maybe a cardboard VR, um, they would need to use a 360 image of the experience rather than the full experience itself because those devices aren't powerful enough to run um, that full experience. Instead, they can look at the 360 image preview. And then uh, finally, the things that they can actually do with that 360 image are uh, pretty varied as well. So they can actually um, upload that to you know, their Facebook page or their website. And um, they could even see that in uh, the RapidXR webpage, which will be coming soon. And so they could add that custom 360 image to their own workspace. Lastly, the one option that is great for this demo um, that I would love to try out would be seeing this shed in augmented reality. Any of the experiences that you make using the RapidXR Studio can be viewed in augmented reality very simply on the RapidXR app. So definitely check that out as well. All right, feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And then thank you for watching and please join in next week to see more options about how you can um, share and uh, customize your awesome uh, products and scenes in 3D using the RapidXR Studio. All right, thank you for joining this week.